Hi, my name is Jason Price. I'm on the Voltage Team's goal team, and today we're going to be talking about the relay feedback. Other team members include Jeremy, Jared, and Sonny. Give you a brief outline. Uh, we're going to go over the system details, what our system looks like, look at some experimental observations of the uh, relay feedback system, and look at a summary of the results. We've looked at this before. Here's our voltage system. Uh, the voltage uh, recorder it sends information to the voltage controller, goes into the three phase or the five horsepower three phase motor, which in turn turns a DC generator creating voltage as the output. The voltage output is sent back to the, the uh, relay, back to the recorder. Transmitter, excuse me. We've seen this before as well. The input for our system is going to be in percent in power input, the output will be in voltage. Just to bring you back up to speed on where we were before, here's our steady state operating curve. Our team, the goal team, is going to operate between an input of 70 and 95%, and uh, which corresponds to around uh, 72 to 90, 95 volts in the output range. So what exactly is a feedback relay? Well, unlike some of the other systems that we've seen so far, the input changes depending on the uh, response of the output. What I've done is taken a general feedback relay diagram here. The, up, the input has two uh, primary points of interest called the ceiling and floor. We're going to see the input on the next screen where we put this into the system before it was run. But what's interesting is that when the input is high, the, uh, it causes the, the output to start to come up. But as soon as it crosses a point known as the set point, which we set as well, it begins to decline. Or it switches the input switches from what was a high value to a lower value, which we also set, and it causes the response to come down again. Now this switches back and forth repeatedly, and also interesting about the feedback relay system, it goes as fast as the system will allow it to, which I'll show you the significance of that here in a moment. So for our uh, for the experiment, uh, I chose a floor of 93.6 percent and a ceiling of 95.2 percent, a set point of 92.5 volts. This is where I would like the output to be. This is the desired output. The baseline input value is just the input that the system is going to start at before it proceeds into this oscillating back and forth. And the input range again. This is as high as much power and or as little power and as much power as it's going to put in into order to try to keep it at that set point. So here's some results that we are, that actual diagram, the data that we took from the system. What it did was we plotted it on the time scale here so we can calculate the shift. And the shift is found between the midpoint of the input and the midpoint of the output. This came out to be, in this particular case, 0 0.06 seconds. It's also interesting to note that the peak of this is actually in between the peak or right at the peak of the valley here. So this actually does correspond to the ultimate frequency, which we'll see in another slide. The, uh, in order to calculate the amplitude ratio, we took the change in the input over the change in the output, or excuse me, the change in the output over the change in the input. For this particular cycle here, it was found to be 1.5 volts per percent. Now, what I mentioned, I kind of alluded to before, is the period. Taking one point on the input curve corresponding to the, the uh, adjacent cycle, the same point, the distance there for this particular one came out to be 0.14 seconds. The inverse of that will give us the frequency of the input. However, for this particular feedback relay system, that also corresponds to the ultimate frequency of the system. In this case, it was 7.1 hertz for the input range that we chose here. To kind of conclude what we got, as we took values from each of these cycles, uh, took the average value, found the standard deviation at 95% confidence level. For the, fate of the shift value, it was about 0 0.07 seconds, plus or minus 0 0.003. The period was about 0.14 seconds, which of course, uh, plus or minus 0 0.006 seconds. The uh, ultimate frequency average was 7.1 hertz, plus or minus 0.3. The amplitude ratio was 1.5, plus or minus 0 0.05 volts per percent. And the ultimate controller gain was found to be 0.86 plus or minus 0.03 percent per volt. Just to compare this, uh, the, you'll notice from the beginning that the, the input range was very small. What we did is we took a, over the entire range that we had, 
ran the same experiment and got some other values just to compare them to such a small, uh, a small choice to begin with. The average shift, again, was 0 0.09, which I believe corresponds to 0 0.07 before, so there wasn't much change there. 0 0.17 for the average period, plus or minus 0 0.014 seconds. Uh, the ultimate frequency, however, was a little bit slower. It had a, such a wider range of the input, the ceiling and value, the ceiling and floor value, that the time it takes to oscillate back and forth, it caused the frequency to be a little bit slower. Uh, 5.8 hertz, plus or minus about a half hertz. The amplitude ratio, significantly different than the previous one. Before it was 1.5, however, in this one it's only 0.48, and that's plus or minus 0.026 volts per percent. And the uh, average controller gain, ultimate controller gain, is 2.6, plus or minus 0.13 percent per volt. I got two. Yes, sir. 0.86 for the KCU here, and what about the other? 2.6. Thanks. Thank you.